Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 12. In our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent set of video tutorials. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. The good news is this kit has all the components you will need to complete this class. And most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. <clears throat> you can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to teach you how to understand and use the RGB LED. What is the RGB LED, you ask? <clears throat> it is an LED that comes in the Kepler kit that you can turn different colors. You can turn it red, you can turn it green, you can turn it blue. You can mix and match the colors if you like. Now, how do you find the RGB LED? Well, you open up your Kepler kit and you pull out this little bag of delicious LEDs and you look and some of them are clear. You want to find the clear one that has four legs. There's one LED in this bag that is clear and has four legs. <clears throat> the four-legged LED is, in fact, the RGB LED. So now, how does the RGB LED work? Let's switch over to, to this view. Let me get out of your way, and let's just jump right in. First of all, what you can see is, as I said, the LED is clear, and it has four legs. First thing to understand is that long leg is the ground leg. The short leg to the left of the ground leg, that is the pin that controls red. <clears throat> the intermediate leg to the right of the long leg is the leg that controls green. And then over to the right, the short leg again is blue. The way that you should understand this LED is very simply, it is three LEDs packaged in one little dome, and those three LEDs have a common ground pin, okay? If you think about it that way, you can apply all the things that you've already learned to, about LEDs and you can apply it to the RGB LED. Now there's one thing that's very, very important and that is each one of the channels, red, green, and blue needs its own current limiting resistor. Now one of the most common questions that I get from folks is, well, can I just use one current limiting resistor in the on the ground pin and call it good. No, that's going to cause crosstalk between your channels when you start mixing colors. <clears throat> and so believe me, for this to work properly, each one of the pit three pins, red, green, and blue, needs its own current limiting resistor. So how would we hook this thing up? Well, first of all, like I say, we have three LED. draw them up here okay you have the red you have the green and you have the blue and then they come down and they have a common ground <clears throat> and then each one of these is going to need its own current limiting resistor okay and then each one of these is going to go to its own GPIO pin. Now for my circuit, I am going to hook the red LED up to physical pin 17, which is GPIO pin 13. I'm going to hook the green leg up to physical pin 19, which is GPIO pin 14. And then I'm going to hook the blue leg up to GPIO pin 20, which is 
or a physical pin 20, which is GPIO pin 15. So we're going to go GPIO pin 13, 14, and 15. And then between the GPIO pin and each LED, we're going to have its own, each is going to have its own <clears throat> current limiting resistor. Okay, so let's, that's kind of in general how we're going to do it. Let me come over here and now specifically show you the schematic of how I hook this thing up. So we'll come over here to the schematic view. And again, you can see that as we are going right <clears throat> to left, this is the right pin which is the red pin, it comes over and connects to a 220 ohm current limiting resistor. And then that red pin from the current limiting resistor, well, let's see, I, let me, I was pointing where you can't see it. We've got the red leg of the LED. It comes over to its own 220 ohm current limiting resistor. And then it hops over to physical pin 17, which is GPIO pin 13. Now the second leg here, that is the long leg and I have that going down to the ground rail and then the ground rail is made the ground rail by coming over and hooking up to this third pin here. This is a ground pin. <clears throat> the next pin is the green pin. The next leg is the green leg of the LED. That comes over to its own 220 ohm resistor. It hops on over to physical pin 19, which is GPIO pin 14. Then finally, the blue leg of the LED comes down. It goes over to its own 220 ohm resistor, and then it connects to physical pin 20, which is GPIO pin 15. And so if you hook this up, you'll have something that looks just like what we showed over here, and it will work quite nicely. Now let's come over and look at how I actually hooked this thing up. And you can see that I kind of simplified it a little bit. It's just hard to draw this simplified one on the schematic. You can do the schematic, or you can do it like I did it on the schematic, or what you can do is you can do the simplified version here, which is just to take the LED and plug it directly into those, uh, into those resistors. So either way will work. I drew it where it was easier to see, and then I built it where it was a little more compact. Okay, guys, that is the hookup. I think we are ready now to come over and start programming this thing. So let me come over to our most excellent Thani and our most excellent code view, and we'll jump in. <clears throat> and we'll start programming this thing up. Well, first of all, we're going to be using PWM and pin. So I'm going to say from machine import pin and PWM. I want to be able to control the levels of brightness. So we'll be using PWM. <clears throat> it's always good to have delays. So I'm going to say from time import sleep like that. Now we said the red pin, the red pin is going to be physical pin 17, which is GPIO pin 13. Green pin is going to be physical pin 19, which is GPIO pin 14. If you don't understand that, just always refer back to the little pin out card that comes in the, uh, in the Sun Founder kit and it'll help you understand that. Finally, blue pin <clears throat> is equal to 15. And that's, uh, that's GPIO pin 20, which is physical pin 15. Now these are gonna be PWM pins. So let's go ahead and set up the PWM objects. I'm gonna have the, uh, I'm gonna have the red LED is going to be PWM of what? Of pin, of which pin? Red pin, like that. Close the pin, close the PWM. And it should indeed be red, okay. And then green LED is going to be equal to PWM of pin of green pin. <clears throat> I always like to do it in the same order, red, green, blue, red, green, blue. It helps me keep track of my variables better. Okay, then finally blue LED is going to be equal to PWM of pin of blue pin. Close the pin, <clears throat> close the PWM. Okay, now let's go in and actually set those, those PWM channels up. So I'm gonna say the red LED 
dot frequency. What you've learned is a very good frequency to use is a thousand hertz. And then we're going to go ahead and set its duty cycle. <clears throat> and so that will be red LED dot duty underscore. It's an unsigned 16 bit integer and we're going to set it at zero which will turn it off it'll just set it off to get started same thing with green led dot frequency set it to 1000 and then uh <clears throat> green led dot duty underscore unsigned 16 is going to be again uh yeah, this will be zero again. <clears throat> and then blue LED dot frequency of a thousand. And then blue LED dot duty underscore under uh, unsigned 16 bit. <clears throat> and that will turn off as well. So all the LEDs or all the colors are going to start off at off. Now we're ready to get our while loop going so what we're going to say is while true when it's true 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 is always true so we have created an infinite loop now let's go in and set our colors well i'm going to say the red brightness to start with i'm going to set that all the way on <clears throat> sixty-five thousand five hundred and fifty. now the green bright I'm going to turn off and so that is going to be equal to zero and then the blue bright I'm going to turn that off and so that's going to be zero and so now what I want to do is I want to go in and actually apply those three brightnesses so my red LED dot duty underscore unsigned 16 bit integer is going to be red bright like that and then green led dot duty ah i said 15. i said 16 but i typed 15. okay <clears throat> underscore u16 is going to be green bright and then blue led dot duty underscore unsigned 16-bit number is going to be blue bright okay now let's just put a little sleep in there just so that we don't run this thing too fast like that could it really be that easy I ask you guys could it really be that easy okay let's come over here I think from here you can see the code view you can see the code view and you can see the LED. You guys tell me when you run, when I run this, what do you predict is going to happen? I want to know your prediction when I run this, what is going to happen? Well, probably half of you guys saw an error that I made in here, but assuming I haven't made an error, what do you expect? Okay, we have the... <clears throat> blue channel off the green channel off and we've turned the red channel on so we expect this to turn red I need everyone to hold their breath I need everyone to hold their breath boom look at that it looks red to me but it probably looks overwhelmingly bright to you so you can't really see so I've got this little cap and I'm gonna see if I put that cap on there oh yeah that looks a lot better you can really kind of see now that is red okay well what could we do we could come in and we could turn the red off and we could turn the green on so I'll turn that to 65,550 on the green and then we will run that and giddy up we've got green we're going to turn the green off <clears throat> and we're going to turn the blue on 65,550 and then we are going to run it and boom it is blue that little cap works pretty good doesn't it we kind of struggle ping pong balls work really nicely but unfortunately I don't have a ping pong ball but this little cap is letting you see it pretty well I think okay <clears throat> what if we turn them all off okay we could turn them all off and then run it 
Okay, and it turns off. Now, let's say that we turn the green back to 65,550 and run it, and we are going to be full strength green. What if we turn that to 32,500, <clears throat> run it, and you can see that it is dimmed. And then what if we go 15,000 and then run it, and it is dimmer? What if we say 7,000, run it, and it is still on, but it is pretty dim there. Okay, <clears throat> so you see that we can control the color from the program, and we can control the brightness from the pro program. So we've got just kind of like a quick introduction here. We have a quick introduction here to how to control the RGB LED. Now, this is your homework assignment. Your homework assignment is to prompt the user for what color the user wants. <clears throat> and the choices of color that you need to give them are red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, and then orange, and then white. So red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, orange, or white. And then whatever they specify as the color, then you need to turn the LED that color. And you guys need to kind of mix and match and balance and meld and try to get something that really looks like the right color. You've got to kind of see what they're expecting and you've really kind of matched those colors. That's your homework assignment. Then I will need you to post your homework assignment to YouTube in the description of your homework assignment. Leave a link back to this video and then down below, leave a, leave a comment which links over to your homework assignment. And then after you do it, look at the comments and you guys start looking at each other's homework assignments and then comment on each other's homework assignments. Start seeing what other other people are doing. Now, some of you guys are beginners and are just doing the basic assignments that I'm giving you. That's great. You're doing great. Some of you guys with a lot more experience, every assignment that I give you, you're taking it up to the next level and doing some really cool and impressive stuff. You new guys, you will benefit by looking at some of the other solutions people are putting because a lot of a lot of guys that are taking this class are really doing some really, really incredible things on the homework. Okay, guys, I hope you're having as much fun taking this class as I am making it. If you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up. You always help me with the YouTube juice if you leave a comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so you will get notification of future lessons. And as always, most importantly, share this with other people because the world needs more people coding and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.